So we'll name joint one up arm, name joint two low arm, and name joint three hand. You can probably see where this is going because we've done that many, many times. And now we're going to import the segment that we have from before. So we'll choose import and go to the option box. And we're going to say don't use any namespaces. Import limb segment MA. There we go. So we've got our limb segment right here. And we want to position the limb segment in the right place. So we're going to take the seg group right here and we're going to orient it so it lines up with up arm and we'll position it correctly. There we go. So it's positioned in the right spot and then we'll take the end control. So the start control there, there's the end and we can move this around. We'll move it so it lines up with the lower arm like that. And then we're going to go ahead and attach it with constraints. So we need to attach it either with parenting or with constraints. And I think constraining in this case will be the easiest because it's going to keep it separate from the control itself. I mean, we can just switch back and forth between whatever we need. Okay. So let's select the up arm right there. And we'll sec select the start control. And we'll go constrain parent like that. Then we'll take the low arm and the end control and do constrain parent again. And now, if we take the lower arm and we bend it, let's go ahead and change our rotation order on the lower arm because we know that that one isn't going to work. So we go like this. We can twist it and our arm will twist correctly. We can grab the upper arm and bend it like this. And we can rotate and notice how we get the twist correct. We can swing and the arm's working correctly. That's great. Let's go ahead and bring in the segment again and make a lower segment. So go File, Import, go to the Option Box, and we'll just import like this, and we'll choose Limb Segment again. Now we've got Limb Segment Seg Group 1, and now we'll go ahead and position this so it's moved into the right spot just like we did on the upper arm. We'll grab the lower, the end one, and we'll move this, oops, so it's going to be in the same spot as the hand control right there. Bada boom, bada bing. And now what we can do, just to keep things simple, because we could constrain it the same way we did the other one, but um, when you start constraining things, the scene can get slower. So since we want the limb segment, the first one, to actually follow what the end is doing, we're just going to parent it like that. That way we know they'll be in the same spot always, and we don't have to worry about things slowing down due to too many constraints. Okay? Then we're going to take the end control, like that. And we want to make sure that the hand constrains that, constrain, parent, like this. And now we can control everything with the upper arm, the lower arm, and the hand. So we can take the lower arm, we can do this. We can take the upper arm, we can bend that down, we can twist, and we get the proper twist on the upper arm. We can take the hand, twist that, we get the proper twist there. We can swing the lower arm and get whatever we want. We can twist it if we want. We can bend it out this way, and you'll notice that we're getting the correct orientation all the way along the arm based on whatever these three points are doing because of how we set it up. So we have a very, very robust arm system now where we can animate either forward kinematics or inverse kinematics. And whatever we've got is going to follow through correctly on our skinning and with the result arm.